my name is Paul Grogan and in this video I'm going to be teaching you how to play the introductory game of Tash Kalar, Arena of Legends. In Tash Kalar, each player takes on the role of a duelling mage who summons fantastical beings by creating magical stones and arranging them into specific patterns of power. There are a few ways to play Tash Kalar, each has its own style of play and victory conditions. The introductory game is a simplified two-player version of the high form where the mages are attempting to complete tasks set for them by the lords of the arena. These tasks are worth victory points and the player with the most victory points wins the game. Before we go into the rules, let's take a look at what you get in the box. First of all we have the game board, which is two-sided. For the introductory game we're going to be using this side of the board which you can identify by the shading on the nine centre spaces. You will also notice some spaces are red and green. These have no specific rules but are referred to by the text on a number of cards. The scoring boards are normally used when playing the deathmatch variant. However, we will need the red and the blue boards, flip them over to form the stand where the Lords of the Arena display the tasks they set for the mages. These are the backs for the four different types of cards in the game. These are the beings cards, the creatures that the mages will summon, and they are divided into four schools of magic. For the introductory game, place the Sylvan and Highland cards back into the box. We will only be using the red and blue Imperial school decks, which are identical apart from the colour. Each player will use one of the two decks during the game. Next are the flare cards. These may be played when the magical forces in the arena are in imbalance. They allow mages who are falling too far behind to recover their position. We've mentioned the task cards already. Mages win the duel by completing tasks and scoring points. There are two types. The advanced ones having a darker shade and a legendary symbol in the background. We won't be using the advanced ones for the introductory game. Ah, the legendary cards. These represent the most powerful beings in the game and despite them being amazingly epic, the rulebook suggests that you don't use them for your first game. So put them somewhere safe for now, but keep a watchful eye on that fire dragon as he can cause a lot of mischief if left alone too long. These pieces represent the magical stones of Calorite that the mages create in the arena. The four colours correspond to the different schools of magic, so for the introductory game we will be using the red and blue pieces only. There are three types of pieces. The common pieces are the lowest rank, heroic pieces are the middle rank, and the legendary pieces are the highest rank. The circular pieces are two-sided, with the common symbol on one side and the heroic on the other. 